You're listening to The John and Heidi Show. Now, featuring the wit and wisdom of Dan Ferris. Okay, dudes, let's walk this sucker. On Sunny 93.3. It's The John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris, brought to you by SueEmpireJobs.com. Mr. Ferris, good morning to you. Hey, happy Friday. Yeah, it's what Friday. a beautiful week it's been, too. Everybody loving the 60s stuff? Oh, oh yeah, Heidi's gosh, had amazing. me slaving away in the house. Yeah, and I think uh, this is going to kind of creep through to the beginning of next week, Tuesday probably. And, and then, then there's a blizzard. Awesome. Blizzards are going to fall off. <laughs> okay, I mean, we get blizzards that. in April. I think we've got yeah. them in, I don't know, whatever. But, you know, enjoy it whilst yeah, you can. Enjoy every bit of it, yes. Uh, happy birthday to actress Eve Mendez. She's 47 today, if you don't know who Eve Mendez is. Probably the one that really stuck out for me is uh, the Will Smith movie Hitch. Oh, yep. yeah. She was yep. his co-star yep. in that. Did a great job in that. So there you go. <clears throat> uh, Penn Jillette. I like him. Oh, yeah. With Penn and Teller. He's the one who speaks. Yes. Mm. He's 65 today. Nice. You want to rock down to Electric Avenue. Eddie Grant, who, John, I know uh, you've had the pleasure of yeah, hanging with. He's, uh, he is one of the nicest people in the world. He really is. Way. Eddie is uh, 72 today. Oh, nice. And uh, this is one of those songs. I mean, let's face it. <clears throat> songs have what's called a burn ratio. Oh, yeah. Yes. Usually you hear songs, and I was like, I don't need to hear that again for a long time. Right. What about their ears? There are just certain songs where I just, I turn it up every time and have since <clears throat> since they were released. One of them is uh, One Night in Bangkok by yeah, Murray Head. I agree with oh, yeah. you. Still love it. Murray 75 yep. today. Yeah, and there's another version of that that's just all wrong. It's of course It's got to be is. Murray Head or nothing. Oh, that particular song, it's got to be Murray Head. But he's a pretty prolific uh, writer, producer, everything else. He's yeah. still working. What you maybe didn't know is Murray Head's kid brother anthony yeah an actor he was rupert giles in buffy the vampire slayer tv oh, series i did not know that that's murray's kid brother that murray's head's kid and, and here's the i don't know if you know this he's got a, a cousin named mr potato head <laughs> john <laughs> yo john john okay, i went to school know. with several of his cousins richard would you stop it <laughs> <laughs> stop. wow <laughs> Thank goodness for Elvis Presley, because this day in 1960, Elvis wow. ends his service in the U.S. Army. Oh, yeah. Which was nice. Back in the day when, you know, it yeah. didn't matter who you were, you served. Yep. Yeah. That's all there, uh, all there was to it. And he actually could have gotten out of it. He did not want to. Because there were several artists and celebrities yeah. and stuff that, that just said, eh, no, I'm... I'm needed here. A little backstory on that, which you may not know. We're all very familiar with as Elvis got older, what is uh, drug use and abuse and everything else that actually got sparked and triggered during his service in the Army stationed in Germany. <clears throat> he had tweaked his back like bad. Oh. And one of his service buddies said, hey, try these. Right. Oh, and wow. I didn't the, know the that. Edge off. And they were, you know, painkillers. And that's where his addiction started. Wow. That's too bad. Kind of, kind of went on from there. Let's see. It was 2002. This was huge, actually. Reality TV series The Osbournes, featuring Ozzy and family, premieres on MTV. Nice. And in 2019, and I've looked in everybody's driveway in Sioux Falls, so I'm not sure where it is, but this day in 2019, the Bugatti Automotive Company announces the most expensive new car ever made in the history of automobiles. Hmm called the Le Vecture Noire, price tag, $19 million. Whoa! How many cup holders do you think that thing has? <laughs> one. You know what? I'll bet you didn't even Probably have Probably none. I'll bet it didn't even have a cigarette lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. $19 million. Yeah. That just seems a bit excessive. Imagine the insurance on that. Well, I was going to take the time to see where it went, but then I said, nah, I don't really care. I wonder what the insurance would look like on a $19 <laughs> million dollar car. Yeah, call your insurance guy. Yeah. And say, hey, I've got this. Go, yeah, we really don't We don't really have any schematics for that. Uh, could you maybe just not I drive just put it? put liability on that, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and bang it up and try calling Nordstrom's for parts. <laughs> you got any Bugatti parts? What? No. That's for a 2019 Levitin. <laughs> what about oh. the catalytic converters worth on that bad boy? <laughs> I mean, you can come out to Garrison on a Saturday and do the you pull it thing, save a little money. So, there you go. I know now you know, we all know, and we can just stumble forward, man. All right. It is the John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris, brought to you by SueEmpireJobs.com.
Do you have a credit card? Is it a pretty good one? Here's how you can tell. Take the details of your current card, the interest rates, points and perks, and compare them for free to the available offers at BetterCreditCards.com. If we can offer you a better credit card, it could save you money every month. This will literally cost you nothing, and it could help you save money. Even if you don't have a credit card right now, you can still check it out at BetterCreditCards.com. Do it today. BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Com. Time now for Ranger Dan's Critter Corner. Well, I'm rough, tough, and ready. I'm a heck of a man. Eat my beans and weenies from a frying pan. He's Ranger Dan. He's here. I'm Ranger Dan. Well, I love to wrestle bears and lasso ducks. Run over possums in my government truck. He's Ranger Dan. He's here. I'm Ranger Dan. Well, I lose all the campers and the animals, too. If you're picking on them critters, I'm coming after you. He's Ranger Dan. He's here. Ranger Dan. Good morning, Ranger Dan. Good morning, Ranger Dan. All right, proud snappy salute after the well stared broom of the Ranger Dan cap to you, too. How you doing over there, Sergio? <laughs> hey, hi <hey>, there. <laughs> Ranger Dan. <laughs> Woo! Got to tell you what, we've been delving in the world of uh, turkeys and wild turkeys here the past uh, couple episodes of Critter Corner. And quite frankly, things have been just kind of going off the rails with this yeah. whole situation. Now, this whole thing's based on a. Uh, a little, uh, little email I got, a little press release I got, because gosh darn it, I am a South Dakota Ranger, and it is from the Game Fish and Parks Department, City of Sioux Falls, offering a turkey mentorship program, and this is for reals. For real. The kids say things like that. <laughs> yeah. So here's the deets. <laughs> oh my. GF and P partnering with City of Sioux Falls to provide an opportunity for youths to hunt wild turkeys within the city limits. I'm not making that up. No, yeah. you're not. Youngsters ages 10 to 15 can uh, go on the old uh, web things there, web figure it out, and uh, get registered. I really don't care. <laughs> so what you need to do is go to the Ranger Dan website, click on the drum stick. We're going to send you from Ranger Dan Enterprise, subsidiary of Ranger Dan Global, your very own live turkey for just twenty nine ninety five plus shipping and handling, and you can do whatever the heck you want with it. <laughs> Cut through the red tape and just get her done. Anyway, I thought it'd be interesting to go through a couple wild turkey facts so you know what you're dealing with here. Did you know that the male turkeys are indeed referred to as gobblers? Yeah. Because they, in fact, do make a sound that sounds a lot like gobble. gobble. Yeah. When they announce themselves to the females, that's when they do most of their gobbling. Now, the female wild turkey is known as the hen. The hen does not gobble. Okay. The female turkey can actually make sounds that sound like a purr. Hmm. Okay. Can do sharp little yelps in something that sounds like key. Hmm. Oh. As in, where's my keys? Okay. Wow. Now, an adult gobbler or male can weigh up 22, 25 pounds even on average. And has a beard of modified feathers on his breast that reaches up to seven inches or more in length. Sharp spurs on his legs. You know why? Why is that? For fighting. Ooh. They get into tussles over the lady folks. Yep. Now, the hen's going to be quite smaller by four to five pounds each, weighing in at just up to about 12 pounds. Has no beard or no spurs. Now, both genders have what's called a snood. Say it with me because it's hilarious. Snood. snood. That's that dangly appendage on the face. Yeah. That, <clears throat> then, yeah. Also known as the wattle. Okay. That red dangly bit right under the, the chin there. Now, studies have shown that snood length is associated with male turkey health and vitality. <laughs> really? According to a 1997 study in the Journal of Avian Biology, which I have combed through with a fine tooth comb, found that female turkeys apparently prefer males with, with longer snoods. <laughs> And that snood can predict the winner of a competition between two males. Now, here's the thing. Now, I don't know if it's true or not, but I have seen studies where in the male species, human beings. Right. Yeah. Ladies, a lot of times, will look at a man's shoe size. Yes. <laughs> it's snood to see how big snood is. I did a little is. research in there because apparently a man's shoe size can set a gauge for some other will. I don't even want to get into it. But I will tell you this much. <laughs> I don't know if that's just myth, urban legend, or what the ding-dong deal is, but I'm not going to lie to you. When it comes to those singles nights, either at Pave or Wiley's, maybe ladies' night at the log cabin, or little Hoot and Annie, a little mix them up at Ken's Corner there up on up on 6th Street. Old Ranger Dan will rock a pair of size 13 uh, hiking boots, and I've just got a size 10 foot. So. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have today, little Radio Rangers. I sure... 
Sure hope you learned something. Say it one more time. Snood? Snood. Snood. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I can't, can't. I love how you two enable me. It's just hilarious. <laughs> you really shouldn't. Well, next time, read Dan out and say it with me. Yes, yes sir. sir. I really need to quit drinking. I really need to give up drugs. It's not going to be easy, but we'd love to help. Addiction can drive away those who love you the most, and addiction can lead to the loss of jobs, relationships, and even your life. Don't let addiction tear your life apart anymore. Get the help you need to defeat addiction and put the pieces back together in your life. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. We want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's time for rehab. Dot com. Time now for the morning coffee break brought to you by Kaladi's Bistro on the corner of 26th and Minnesota Avenue in Sioux Falls. By the way, uh, I yesterday was stumbling on saying where they were located, and apparently people thought that was hilarious that I forgot where it was. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Well, it happens. <laughs> calls right now, right right away saying, so you know how to find Kaladi's, right? <laughs> like, I know where it is. Right there. Right there. <laughs> I just am losing my mind. That's all. Been there in over a decade. Yeah. Uh, speaking of where stuff is, and this is always exciting and pulling the trigger way too too fast, I'm thinking. But hey, <clears throat> you know, if you want to play some golf this weekend in Sioux Falls, you sure can. Oh, yeah. Elmwood's really? wide open. Oh, yeah. Really? Well, they probably won't be open uh, if it starts snowing again or something, but they're open for now. They should be fine through Beautiful the weekend. Weather, yeah. They, yeah. They should be fine. And also uh, B&G uh, Milky Way, 69th and Sycamores. Oh. Throwing the doors open. Not all uh, not all B&G locations in Sioux Falls, but, but that one is. I would Where think is? the ground would still be too wet wouldn't you think that would cause some damage to the no, grounds? No, it would be fine. Huh. Yeah, it's okay. Good. Replace, replace your divots. You know the rules, duffers. <laughs> duffers. Six, did you say 69th in Sycamore? Yeah. I didn't even know there was a... Is it a new one? Well, you don't know where Kaladi's is. So. I know where... <laughs> <laughs> no big surprise there, John. <laughs> I didn't know there was... Yeah, but I again, just, you know, as you know, I have a vehicle that I really, really like, and I've yeah. had it for years, and I take really good care of it, and I store it in the winter. Yeah. Yes. So one of the sure signs of spring, but not really, is when I take that car out. Yeah, right. you get the Mustang. It's yeah. inevitable we're going to get a foot of snow. <laughs> <laughs> you leave that sucker in the garage for a while. My car yes, makes, makes makes that groundhog look like a piker. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just crazy. And so I thought that was uh, kind of fun, and I actually, uh, thanks to uh, Ben Davis, who actually put this story together, and I'm just stealing it. It's I was been- not aware of this, <clears throat> but at some point over the winter, Minnesota and South Dakota had a contest to, hey, name your snow plows. Oh, Talking really? about your city's snow plows. They all okay. had the same name, or they each no, got no, no. different names. No, uh, cities got to name their their own snow plow. But city road workers, snow removal people who oh, work so for person, cities. Oh, so whoever drives that plow. So they like our yeah, and it was Arlen? a contest, and they submitted it, and these are oh, some of the winners. Yeah, our friend and, Arlen drives a snow plow. Yeah, and maybe you'll see some of these when uh, when winter comes back, which shouldn't be too long from now. <clears throat> Aberdeen has a great plow they named Darth Blader. Oh, oh cute. I, love it. I like that. It, uh, Custer, South Dakota is rocking Mount Plowmore. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mitchell's got the Blizzard Wizard. Oh, cool. I love that. Out of Rapid City, Polar Patroller. Oh, oh cute. Winner is cranking up Walter the Salter. Oh, wow. I love that. <laughs> You got Frosty the Snowplow out of Yankton. Oh. My favorite right here in Sioux Falls. I love this so much. Sioux Falls has a city plow named Snowby Gone Kenobi. Oh, oh cute. <laughs> that is really cool. I have to ask Arlen if he gets to drive that. So is it, does that mean every snowplow has a name? Those are just the cool ones? These are the ones that got picked as the best of, of the bunch. I wonder yeah. what all the other ones are. Yeah, I'd kind of like, like to what's know yours? too. Mike. <laughs> just named it Mike. Okay. Metro uh, District uh, out of Minneapolis, uh, by the way, has Plowy McPlowface, <laughs> which is which is kind of kind of cute. <laughs> I love that. that Plowy McPlowface. <laughs> and uh, District Seven in the Twin Cities, and, and I'm guessing I should know this off the top of my head. I don't, but I'm guessing it's in St. Paul because this is where this gentleman is from. But they have a plow named. F. Salt Fitzgerald. Oh, oh cute. Nice. I thought that was kind of clever, None too. Another named uh, How Now Brown Plow? Plowy Mc... 
McPlowface would probably be a name that I would have come up with. Plowy McPlowface is, yeah. is good, yeah. It's Heidi new. would have come up with names we wouldn't be able to say on the radio. That's right, out of Minneapolis <laughs> Metro. But I am sticking with Sioux Falls and Snowby That's Gun. adorable. Kenobi. Love it. That's pretty adorable. I just thought I'd share that kind of fun. I like that and the and the, the Plow Vader thing. Those are both, those are my favorites. So yeah, this weekend, go play Nine Holes and jump over to, to B&G Milky Way 69th and Sycamore. John was not aware it was there. So, so, they probably, <laughs> so they probably still have some treats left. They probably do. <laughs> (laughs) That's got to be a new location. I don't remember that being there last time I drove by. I I think it's uh, probably their newest, I think. yeah. Yeah. I don't remember seeing it before. So, well, I'll have to go check it out. Uh, Well, thank you so much. We'll have you back in here if you'll come back (laughs) with some entertainment news. Would you do that? You know, it's Heidi, it's totally possible that I just said to see if John will actually go there. (laughs) I probably... Be driving around looking. I for wouldn't doubt it. You know, one, he's known me long enough where, where he should be going. Ferris just making up an address. Yeah. So. <laughs> It'll be me and fifteen other people standing in line at some guy's garage, at, <laughs> insisting we get ice cream. <laughs> Uh, by the way, we've got a guest coming up, uh, DJ Dave Rowe. We're going to be talking about the the pancake breakfast that's coming up this Sunday. Oh, he's got a great he, story he's the too. Guy that's playing. He was. Uh, he's got on, a great story. If you ever saw the movie Good Morning Vietnam, uh, he actually had that same job over in Vietnam. Yes, he did. And I'm excited. I, I really excited to chat with him coming up right after this. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show Bonus Hour with Dan Ferris. If you could do something today that could save someone's life, would you do it? If it didn't cost you a dime and only took a little time and could literally save a life, would you do it? Can you believe that only 3% of people say yes to this? How is that possible? That's the real percentage of people who give blood. It's something you can do whether you're a millionaire, middle class, or completely poor. There's no fee and it's easy to do. And you can literally save a life. Let's roll up our sleeves and make a difference. Give blood. We can do better than 3%. Learn more at redcrossblood.org. Time now for a bright spot of news brought to you by Paul's Designer Showroom on Lake Lorraine in Sioux Falls. They can brighten any room with a beautiful light fixture. We are going to brighten your day right now with some good news. I have uh, Vietnam radio DJ Dave Rowe joining me. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, John. How are you? I am fantastic, and I'm excited to visit with you because you've got a really fun thing you're going to be doing this Sunday at the Alliance Building in Sioux Falls so people can enjoy some pancakes and while they're enjoying their pancakes they get to listen to you perform and have some fun. Tell me a little bit about what you're going to be doing. I started my DJ career back in Vietnam back in 1972 and long story made short from there when the end of the war came and we packed up the radio station I decided to record my last show on the air including the jingles and everything from that era put it on a reel-to-reel tape and bring it home with me And since then, I've been asked a couple of times to recreate that show for the Vietnam veterans. So what I'm going to do on Sunday during the pancake breakfast, May 30 to noon, out at the Alliance, is I'm going to uh, have a sound system out there. I'm going to have it complete with the music and the jingles of the last show I did, and I'm going to recreate that show so it's going to sound to the veterans like geez i can remember that i was in vietnam that's the same radio jingles i heard the same music i heard and there's some specific songs that are specific to vietnam that i'm going to play and talk a little bit about the background that will remind those guys of yeah i know where i was when i heard that song that is really cool thank you for doing this and thank you for sharing that with people i think that's just a really neat thing and now how long were you a, a, a soldier how long were you in vietnam and all of that dave well, I've, I'm actually retired military. I did end up doing 30 years in the military, but I spent 11 months and X number of days there. I was one. I'm one of the youngest Vietnam veterans, and we kind of closed down the war. So, uh, yeah, so that was a long time ago. But uh, uh, I ended up being a mobile DJ and working uh, locally in the DJ business for a few years after I got out, and then. Uh, this idea was kind of sparked about five years ago when we had the miniature Vietnam Wall in Sioux Falls. Yeah. Uh, and I was asked to recreate my show out there for the veterans as part of that, and we had a really good response. They asked me to do it one night. I ended up going three nights in a row just because the response was so great. So when American Legion got a hold of me, we talked about this. I said, well, I can recreate the show. We're going to do it one hour at a time. I'm going to repeat that three times over so somebody doesn't have to come out and sit for four hours. Somebody coming out at 1030 will hear the same show that the person at 830 eating pancakes heard. So I've set up the show to repeat it three times uh, during the day so that no matter what time you come out, you're going to hear the same information. It's just that the music will be different every hour, but it's still all going to be music that the guys heard, uh, guys and gals heard on the radio when they were in Vietnam. 
Well, thank you for your service to our country, and also thank you for doing what you're doing here. I think this sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it, uh, I've done it a couple times before for different people, and it, it's fun to do it, and it's interesting. The veterans will come up and say, I can tell you exactly where I was when I heard that song. In fact, one comment, the last comment has really stuck with me. You were, pl- Dave, you were playing that song when I jumped out of a helicopter in a rice paddy one day in Vietnam. And I, yeah, okay, I probably was. Well, I really wasn't because I worked the night shift at the radio station. Okay. But the point was that the song meant something to him. He could tell me specifically where he was when he heard that song. That's one of the more popular songs that we heard in Vietnam. So there's a lot of nostalgia that goes with that. The guys come up and say, I remember that song. I can tell you what I was doing. Uh, and that's the whole idea, to bring back more of the positive memories of the time we spent in Vietnam rather than some of the negative stuff. Absolutely. Now, back in the 1980s, there was a movie called Good Morning Vietnam, uh, very famously with uh, with uh, Robin Williams. When you watch yep. that movie, does that is that pretty similar to what it was really like, or is that just kind of Hollywood? No, it, it, it's similar in some fashion in the fact that that movie was set supposed to be set around Saigon. I was actually in Da Nang, which is different Saigon. It's kind of Americanized city. Da Nang was 50 miles from the DMZ, so that was more war zone, a lot of flights in and out of there. So it was a different setup, but still, and the radio from Saigon didn't reach all the way to the north. That's why we had a separate detachment. We ran our, our radio right out of Da Nang. Uh, but yeah, there were a lot of similarities there. And of course, Adrian Cronauer, everybody remembers him from 1966. Uh, then along two years later in 1968 comes Pat Sajak. He was in Saigon. And then I always say, well, there's two famous persons, and you probably don't know me, but I had Night Beat Show in Da Nang in 1972. So two out of three of us became famous, and I'm just <laughs> there. So uh, I kind of have fun with that. We joke about that a little bit. That's awesome, and we're excited to see you on Sunday. Dave, thank you for your time today, and thank you so much for doing what you're doing this Sunday. If folks would like to see you, they can come to the South Dakota Military Heritage Alliance, and that's on Russell Street. What time will you be performing from when until when? I'll be playing from 8.30 until noon. It's, the program will repeat itself about every hour, so they're going to hear the same same kind of program no matter what time they come out during the morning. So come out early, come out a little later, either way. Thank you again for your time today, sir. You're quite welcome. Thanks, John. Again, it's happening this Sunday. I'm going to go to that. That sounds like a whole lot of fun. It's at the South Dakota Military Heritage Alliance. All of the information at facebook.com slash sunny radio and facebook.com slash Sioux Falls News. Do you have a credit card? Is it a pretty good one? Here's how you can tell. Take the details of your current card, the interest rates, points and perks, and compare them for free to the the available offers at bettercreditcards.com. If we can offer you a better credit card, it could save you money every month. This will literally cost you nothing and it could help you save money. Even if you don't have a credit card right now, you can still check it out at bettercreditcards.com. Do it today. bettercreditcards.com. That's bettercreditcards.com. Channelsurfertv.com presents Entertainment News of the Day with Mr. Dan Ferris. The celebrities are so gosh darn fabulous. fabulous you know everybody's michael jackson fan oh yeah i have always kind of preferred his his sister's music janet oh. jackson yeah, she's, i like janet she's good. yeah and janet's life story is getting the documentary treatment next really? year from really? lifetime and a and e to celebrate holy cow the 40th anniversary of her first album Really? Holy cow. Mm-hmm. Working title, Janet. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Imagine the think tank it took to come up Honest with Honest to that. goodness, her first album, of course, is self-titled Janet Jackson, was released in 1982. She was just 16 years old. Oh, wow. Documentary uh, promises to offer unprecedented access to the Rock and Roll Hall of Famer's life and an intimate, honest, and unfiltered look at the untold story of one of the highest earning artists in music history. Uh, this thing has been in production for about three years now, putting it all together. Really? Documentary, so I've always yeah. thought she was so cool. She just really had, Again, back in the day, mm, especially back in the 80s, she had this super cool vibe. There's some of those songs they just talk to you. They just reach yeah. out and grab you. For, instance, for me, it's Janet Jackson and, of course, Nasty Boys. <laughs> oh, are you going to read the words? I'd like to do a dramatic reading of uh, Oh, okay. Quiet. Uh, Everybody some. quiet. Quiet on the set. So if you want to help me out here, whenever yeah. I throw out a verse, all you guys have to do is say, nasty boys. Okay. Nasty boys. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ready. <clears throat> Don't mess this up, Heidi. Hey, who's that thinking nasty thoughts? 
Nasty, nasty boys. boys. Who's that in that nasty car? Nasty boys. Who's that eating that nasty fruit? Nasty boys. And who's jamming to my nasty groove? Nasty, nasty boys. boys. Ladies, nasty, nasty boys, boys don't mean a thing. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, you nasty, you nasty boys. boys. <laughs> that oh, is no, we got a snap. Yeah, snap yes, That's snap how this whole snap started. <laughs> is that mainly, how we started the stupid mainly, snap? Yes. Thing? Mainly based on the fact when we figured out you could only snap with one I hand. I can't only really snap one hand. <laughs> yep. So now you guys do it to taunt me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every day. Oh, every course. morning. Every morning you snap to taunt me. <laughs> every morning. Look, John's tipping over. <laughs> Two and a half of us are snapping right now. <laughs> You too. <laughs> I should be a protected Poor John. class. People who can only snap one hand. Uh, the docu- documentary also is going to drill down deep into the details of the most talked about moments of her life, including the 2004 Super Bowl appearance. Oh, yeah. With the wardrobe malfunction. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Get after it. Okay, and that's all. And the coffee enemas, which I think is interesting. What? what, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. <laughs> Oh, that perks me right up. <laughs> Apparently it does her as well, which is why she does them. Wow. <laughs> Hopefully not scalding hot. Oh, Dan, thanks for coming in, man. Wow, just wow. <sighs> yeah, exactly. It's the <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's, it's truly truly an honor. Honor to uh, to be here and generally uh, just a big surprise. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> it's the John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris, brought to you by ShoplocalSiouxFalls.com. I really need to give up drugs. I really need to quit drinking. It's not going to be easy, but we'd love to help. Addiction can drive away those who love you the most, and addiction can lead to the loss of jobs, relationships, and even your life. Don't let addiction tear your life apart anymore. Get the help you need to defeat addiction and put the pieces back together in your life. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. We want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Here's your Market Beat Minute for Friday, March 5th, 2021. The sell-off in equities deepened on Thursday after comments from Fed Chairman Jerome Powell spooked the market. According to Powell, there's every reason to think job creation will pick up and that inflation may spike in the early stages of the reopening. The broad market S&P 500 shed more than 2% in the wake of the news, but was able to pull back and close above the low of the day. The tech-heavy Nasdaq composite also fell more than 2% before it, too, bounced off the day's low. The blue-chip Dow Jones Industrial Average suffered much smaller losses. The real test for the markets may come Friday. The February non-farm payroll report could be a shocker and could get the market really moving. The consensus estimate is a relatively strong 210,000 new jobs. If the number is significantly above that, it will reinforce the fear of inflation and rising interest rates. You can get the inside track from Wall Street's brightest minds delivered directly to your inbox every day at MarketBeatMinute.com. 